Welcome to Microdosing Table Talks, the world's first podcast dedicated exclusively to learning more about, you guessed it, microdosing. For those new to the community, microdosing is the practice of consuming a psychedelic substance in tiny subhallucinogenic doses with the purpose of enhancing one's quality of life. While this practice has its roots in ancient and indigenous traditions, there's still a lot to learn and a great deal of mystery to uncover. Here at Microdosing Institute, our mission is to merge and honor this ancient wisdom with the growing body of scientific knowledge. In the podcast, we'll introduce you to experts in the psychedelic space to bring you a better understanding of how microdosing can truly serve us, both as individuals and humanity at large. Before we begin, we'd like to extend a thank you to our friends at microdose.nl for sponsoring this episode. Microdose.nl is Europe's number one shop for all of your microdosing needs. For our community members based in the European Union, check out microdose.nl before your next microdosing cycle. Now, let's go ahead with today's episode. On this podcast, our team at Microdosing Institute interviews guests who have made important contributions to the microdosing field. And today's conversation is about the therapeutic value of microdosing, and we'll also dive into the work with psychedelic medicine in larger doses. Today, I'm speaking with Janine Suren. She's a licensed psychologist, psychotherapist, and sexologist. She works with individuals and couples. And as someone who has decades of experience uh, practice in almost every therapeutic modality, uh, such as EMDR, EFT, uh, acceptance and commitment therapy, just to name a few. And when psychedelics entered her life, a whole new window of possibilities opened for her. She became an accredited psychedelic assisted therapy practitioner uh, at the IPI, the Integrative Psychiatry Institute in the US, where she is now also a lecturer about psilocybin assisted psychotherapy and a retreat lead. Additionally, she works in her private practice and she has launched her own institute, the Experiential Training Institute, offering hands-on psychedelic training for clinicians in the Netherlands. And then with us first in the Netherlands being the only accredited training for clinicians, next to these um, trainings, they also offer um, three-day retreats for clients. So welcome, Janine. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. And I can imagine that it's uh, um, that you stumble over the words. I, I totally get it. So. Uh, <laughs> Um, it's a long introduction. It's a whole we're... mouthful. <laughs> yeah, I know, and I'm uh, very happy to be invited on your show. And uh, I'm a big admirer of uh, Microdosing Institute, uh, specifically of you and Hein. We've mm -hmm. known each other uh, for a while, and I, I can see the growth and also the professionalism uh, in what you do. And I, uh, I really admire that. No, so, thank you. Compliments to you. Uh, yeah, thank you for those words. And um, yeah, I'm excited about this whole movement um, becoming more professional and uh, different fields of expertise are now really combining their knowledge, uh, such as the therapeutic and the, uh, the underground and the shamanic. And yeah, everything is now really coming together and uh, uh, joining forces. So excited to go into this conversation. Um, yeah. Maybe you would like to um, share with us uh, how did you discover the therapeutic value of psychedelics? Was this a love at first sight uh, situation? Well, that's actually quite a funny story. Uh, I think uh, um, I, I was just telling a client before we started this podcast on how that kind of happened. So I work uh, a lot in my work as a psychologist and as a psychotherapist. A lot of people come with uh, traumatic uh, experiences. Uh, some people have complex traumas and other people have, um, you know, attachment issues that uh, kind of roll into traumas. And uh, the traditional approaches of, of, of trauma therapy, I, um, I've, I've kind of been there and done that. So my curiosity uh, went after I've been, been doing so many EMDR, which is a rapid eye movement uh, therapy approach that's also very effective. But it's, it, I still thought, okay, what else is there? And then I read about the researches of uh, the uh, MDMA uh, trials and especially with the results. And um, um, so I thought when I was uh, in my late 40s, never done any kind of uh, mind altering. Um, 
experiences, I decided, mm -hmm. okay, I need to, I read about it for a year now. I need to, I need to experience it myself. Basically, I have to walk the talk if I'm going to, if I'm going to work with this. So I did. And I thought, okay, I get it. I really understand what it means when fear receptors are suppressed for a short while. And from that experience, I went into the um, psychedelic uh, alley. And in the Netherlands, we are allowed to work under certain conditions with psilocybin, which, um, which is what I, I now have uh, I teach about psilocybin psychotherapy after having gone through the training myself. And I started working at uh, Field Trip Health in Amsterdam as a chief therapist. So it, it's very interesting, like in the Netherlands, where we are uh, allowed to work legally under certain uh, conditions with psilocybin, that's what I did and I do. And so we have a lot of experience as licensed clinicians in, uh, in this area. And that's why worldwide, there's a big interest in uh, in, in Dutch uh, uh, clinicians who have a lot of experience. So, so to be honest, I have a big toolkit with a lot of uh, tools. But this one, in my opinion, it's not a magic wand, but it definitely comes. It's like it's another layer in my uh, in my toolbox of, of interventions. Having said that, it's not for everyone, uh, but the population of people that I work with, uh, they really have very profound uh, experiences. The thing that always strikes me is that in the mainstream clinical world in therapy, we come across so many labels and diagnoses. You know, there's depression, anxiety, yeah. addictive behaviors, compulsive behaviors, there's trauma, and yeah. it's often labeled as PTSD. Mm -hmm. um, what, in your experience right now, how helpful are these labels? Well, that's a personal opinion. In my, you know, that's the way our system works. So first, you have to name uh, the problem, and then there is a protocol. And mm -hmm. very often, protocols are designed for symptom reduction. But with the psychedelic space, you dive deep where you can sometimes find roots of issues. Because a lot of people that are diagnosed with depression, they don't have the somatic disease depression, which means a lack of certain um, uh, stophius. I don't really know the English word right now, but... Uh, but Serotonin levels or yeah, these biological yeah. causes that... Yeah, mm -hmm. but there is a, a reason why a depression started or why people... Uh, relapse into depression, then the, 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 that can be um, described as unprocessed things or events or feelings or literally not feeling good in your skin because something is there that needs to be looked at or, 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 or can't be found. But with the psychedelics, it really opens up avenues uh, to explore root causes. And that, that, that obviously there's no guarantee that that will happen when using psychedelics. But I think the combination of therapy with psychedelics or coaching with microdosing is a great match. Now, I, I am a big believer in uh, combining the two. Yeah. And is that is that because what you just mentioned, that um, there are root causes, there are unprocessed events or and they come with feelings and we need a space a safely held space to yeah. experience those feelings is yeah. that is that what you're aiming at here yes definitely and and you know uh um i feel with the medications uh, it's short term uh it's short term relief doesn't really fix or solve the problem, but it can be very helpful in certain uh, circumstances or for certain people. But uh, it, uh, it's symptom reduction. It's a whole different uh, approach than with uh, psychedelics, which actually does the opposite and it enhances feelings. So, um, uh, and that's why people need guidance because when you have enhanced feelings or when, when feelings become bigger, then you, you kind of need to know how do I go about handling them instead of suppressing them or avoiding them or fighting them. And uh, uh, because it does open up extra doors and when, you know, you kind of need to be ready to know what to do 
when those doors uh, are gonna open. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And are there scenarios in which you say, well, it's better not to open those doors, or this is not yes. the right way, or I do. If I do. you talk about microdosing and the larger doses, where either one of the two is preferable because of this, um, yeah. yeah, sort of risk. Yeah, I think microdosing is a good start uh, to get a little bit familiarized with uh, with the feelings. And I also believe after a, a bigger dose, like a macrodose, microdosing is a great way uh, to keep in touch uh, uh, with uh, op more openness, more connectivity. That's not said that it, it, it that goes for uh, for uh, for every case, but I do feel that if people don't have enough uh, core stability, uh, it might not be a good idea. So preparing someone to open certain doors is 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 a very good. Uh, I, I think it's essential. It's an essential element uh, in the whole process, and therefore I, I I don't believe it's a it's a quick fix or a magic wand, but it is definitely uh, opening curtains of, of windows that, you know, um, people sometimes don't know they have. Um, right, right. Yeah. So, uh, so not, and no, it's not for everyone. So, you know, obviously there are some certain conditions that are contraindicated to use psychedelics. For example, people with bipolarity or uh, people who are breastfeeding or people who are familiar with uh, psychotic episodes. Uh, for those people, it's, it's not recommended. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We see it also in our community. Um, there's many people who come to us and we always do uh, an assessment to see yeah. where are you right now in your journey? Is it, yeah. are you just opening up? Did you just come, are you in a moment of crisis? Because some people feel they are in an emotional or psychological crisis and they feel like I need help. And I heard that these mushrooms are amazing or you know, I find it actually quite interesting that recently Prince Harry came out in his yeah. uh, biography um, yeah. telling the world that he used uh, magic mushrooms as a medicine to help with grief. Um, yeah, the grief can be, uh, of course, it's a very complex and, and difficult emotional state, but we see that, yes, all your states can be amplified uh, yeah, that's uh, under the influence of a psychedelic, including the microdose. So first do an assessment. What is this core stability? Uh, yeah. Is that available or can we strengthen that first? Yeah. And I also think if, if someone, but that maybe that's because of my background, but if someone is completely unfamiliar with therapy, I, I, I wouldn't say this is the first station. Uh, mm -hmm. to go to. Uh, um, and the other thing I wanted to emphasize is, so we are talking a little bit about psychopathology, right? So people coming from an issue, like like a problem. But I also see a lot of people in my practice who come for personal development yeah, and uh, who are curious to, uh, well, what happens in my brain if I, uh, if I do this? Or how can I get my get to know myself on a deeper level and uh, i think that's also an interesting uh, approach uh, so not necessarily coming from a psychopathology point of view but from uh, hey who am i really or or what, what do i stand for why am i the way i am or those kind of questions yeah yeah we all have those questions even if you're yeah. let's say uh, clinically completely uh, clean and free from any <laughs> labels i feel also that as you know as a human being we're always somewhere on the spectrum of like, yeah. how much access do i have to my emotions how yeah. much am i you know in my head approaching everything intellectually which is something yeah. i still recognize even though i'm on this journey to you know yeah. go more towards the body towards how I feel, towards intuition. It's still a journey and it's still a spectrum that we move on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah I, I, I like to think uh, uh, for a long time, uh, we've been uh, brain oriented, but with this whole uh, psychedelic movement, by the way, my dog is scratching the carpet. I'm sorry for the background noise. <laughs> but, um, so with the whole psychedelic movement uh, and combining it with coaching or therapy it's had combining head and heart yes. uh, and I, I like to think yeah that that that's the new uh, the new way to go in my opinion 
Yeah, yeah. There's there's two more two more directions in which I want to take this conversation. One of them, um, yeah, just continuing a little bit on the labels and specifically depression. We did a documentary uh, with you a yeah. little while ago about uh, microdosing and depression. And in that documentary, you talk about the hamster wheel. So oh, yeah. can you yeah. can you explain this um, from this yeah. perspective? What psychedelics do to a depressed yeah. person? Yeah. So the hamster wheel is kind of an analogy where you are stuck in certain, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> where you are stuck in certain ways of thinking. And then you, it's like a, like a, like a cycle. You, you keep going round and round and round and round in the same thoughts and the same feelings and one makes the other one bigger and you go faster and faster. But basically all you do is, is you, 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 you keep going in a hamster wheel, but with, uh, the psychedelics, you get a chance to leave the hamster wheel and to look around and you might still be in a cage, but at least you can kind of, uh, distance yourself a little bit from the hamster wheel and look at it from a different perspective. And that I find so uh, valuable to like to to have a short term different perspective of the same issues because the hamster wheel is still there. Your cage might still be there, but you don't have to go <laughs> like you get a you get it like a mental shower and. Obviously, after a psych, you know, like a microdose or even a microdose, you still have to learn how to not get stuck in that hamster wheel with the same mechanisms. But the fact that you have experienced it, even briefly for a short time, that there is another way to look at things, can be very profound and and helpful. Yeah. Yeah, because experience is the way we learn best. And in yeah. these amplified states of yeah. amplified consciousness, we experience everything so much more consciously. Yeah, yeah. that can be a really so great to, starting point. Yeah, We need to unlearn uh, habits and to unlearn uh, coping mechanisms that we all use. It's very difficult. The older we get, the more stuck we get in, uh, okay, I can see black and it's black. And we, you know, when 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 you do a psychedelic session, all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, in the black, there is a whole rainbow of colors. Mm -hmm. And I, I never really knew. Uh, and I can tune into different frequencies, even if it's temporary, I know I have the capability to do so. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it's also empowering. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. No matter how challenging uh, the experience can be in certain cases, it's very empowering because you can, first of all, it's empowering to go through, a, 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 you know, to do psychedelics because it's, 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 Geestverruimend, how is it mind expanding? That's kind of, oh, mind expanding. How does that work? Um, but it, it, yeah, it's very valuable, I think. Yeah. So going back to your question about uh, uh, the labels, yeah, that's the way our Western society is very much programmed. You need a label and then there's a protocol, you follow that protocol and, uh, and that's how you go for symptom reduction. But the whole psychedelic approach is not so much about symptom reduction. It's more about yourself getting to know your di the different parts of you, of you and why they, when they were born and why they developed and how you can relate to them from a, you know, like a, like a healthy adult perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, um, can you illustrate this with maybe a couple of examples of which parts are active in people who yeah. have high anxiety, uh, yeah. deep depression, for instance? Yeah. So today I had a, just, just before this session, I had a conversation with someone who has a very strong protector and, uh, this protector is, is, okay, in clinical terms, it's an obsessive compulsive part. And the protector is protecting the person from connecting with grief or feelings of loneliness or feelings of emptiness. And the way that uh, unhealthy protector is doing its job is by making someone wash their hands 40 times or touch the door uh, uh, 20 times. But it's really a distraction, a distraction from connecting with 
a much deeper feeling, which is very difficult to tolerate. So the protector, let's call it the OCD uh, man, is doing a great job because it's like bigger than uh, the healthy adult. These terms are from uh, schema therapy, but it's it's much bigger. So in therapy, we work with, okay, can you find this uh, protective mechanism and see if you can have a conversation uh, to, to see, okay, uh, uh, what is it protecting so much? And perhaps there is a way to connect with what's underneath. Yeah. Um, and so that's one part, the protector. There's very often all of us have a child part in us, an like angry child or a vulnerable child. And these are all layers of the onion that are doing a function that have a job. But at the core of the onion is our, our vulnerable part. And that's what we learn to you know, keep away from everything that's difficult. But with a psychedelic journey, uh, sometimes we can go to the core of the onion and that can be super meaningful to uh, to see if there is anything we can do to, you know, s s not fire protectors, but to uh, relate to them in a different way, to maybe get ha have a voice and say, hey, you don't need to work so hard for me because uh, I have a creative part too. Yeah. So yeah, this, and this, also it's okay. It's okay to be vulnerable. It's yeah. okay to feel these things. Uh, yeah. And then the protecting parts are not gone, but they don't have that much work to do anymore. Yeah, or they, they can do their relevant. job in a different way. Like they can they can change the the way they feed information by distracting or avoiding that can be with alcohol, that can be with uh, you know, any any behavior to change it into uh, something else, something healthier. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's it's about honoring all those parts of ourselves, yeah. essentially, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, uh, but it it's, takes uh, yeah. it takes uh, being able to be with yourself and with hurts and pains and all kinds of feelings, and uh, that's what. I think we are all doing in our lifetime is how do you be and stay with yourself? And that's not always easy because, yeah. you know, fleeing or fighting or avoiding is a short term relief. Yeah. Yeah. And we are also uh, in this world gifted with so many distractions and so many oh, options absolutely. and things we could do and uh, temptations, which makes it really difficult to just be with ourselves it's uh yeah something you're absolutely learned right. yeah it's yeah. becoming more and more of a challenge to not be on your phone and watch tv at the same time yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, exactly. We become very skilled multitaskers and yes. uh, and yeah. something like meditating and just being in the moment becomes yeah. almost like uh, the exception to the rule. Yeah, yeah. it's funny now, uh, the, the, the meditation apps uh, that we use now are becoming like they are offering three minute meditations, four minute meditations. That's, I think that's also a sign of, uh, oh, yeah, OK, you can do a quick meditation, too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it's a starting point. It's a starting yeah. point if you have difficulty concentrating. I know we're also, you know, in our community, we have different generations. Um, yeah, I think the younger generations are even more used to being bombarded with yeah. so much media, so much distractions that three minutes of full presence is already yeah. a good start. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. 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 Hey, and touching upon. Um, that relationship with yourself, um, mm -hmm. yeah, just cultivating that relationship first. Um, I know you've said before also that you believe that relationships are at the very core of yeah. our human emotions and our well-being. And yeah. maybe this is not something that every therapist would say. So can you explain this? Yeah, uh, I feel connectivity and relationships with yourself and with others are kind of... Um, nurture, uh, essential uh, nurture for um, feeling a sense of purpose mm -hmm. and uh, uh, feeling a sense of groundedness. Because in my practice, uh, a lot of people who don't feel grounded or who flee into external 
input uh, find it very hard to be with themselves. And um, uh, so relationships, in my, in my opinion, are an essential um, part of um, feelings of happiness. And so being with yourself and tolerating to be with yourself is not always easy. Uh, and we can see that in psychedelic sessions too. Um, you know, when you do a bigger dose, there's, you can see how people struggle to hand over the keys to the, you know, the control center up here and to really be with themselves and trust themselves to surrender to the experience because surrendering to the experience is really being okay with being with yourself. Before we continue with the rest of the interview, I'd like to inform you on one of the programs we run at Microdosing Institute that might interest you. Our six-week microdosing intensive is the most holistic and powerful option we offer for microdosing support. 95% of participants indicate that they had a positive personal transformation in just six weeks. Additionally, many participants gained lifelong community connections and valuable tools to continue exploring and integrating insights even after the program has ended. One participant noted, the arc of the program worked well and guided us through our experiences. It was very clear from everyone sharing that we had all been through a profound process together that touched each of us deeply. To start your journey of personal transformation with microdosing, please visit the link in our show notes or head to our website. Yeah. Relationship with self and with others are, in my opinion, very, very important into, you know, in, into, in life, in human life. Yeah. Yeah. They, they de determine the quality of our life. The quality yeah. of our relationships determines the quality of life. And yeah. we see this also a lot, uh, in the microdosing community and working directly with people. Um, and also looking at the, you know, ancestral wisdom traditions, they talk about being in right relationship and that, that basically says it all. But it also yeah. means being in right relationship with yourself, with the people close to you, with um, nature, with the place where you live, with your food, with everything that you use, with everything that you take from nature or from others. It's about asking permission. It's about reciprocity. So it is really the, yeah, the fabric of our life and of our quality of life. And I think we also don't realize often how much... Um, um, influence we can have on those relationships, how much we can do to actually improve them. Mm -hmm. At least that's been I, the case for me. It's that it took me like, I don't know, many years until I realized, oh, there's actually, I can do something about this relationship or about this way of relating. Yeah. And sometimes uh, I also feel uh, it means uh, ending relationships that don't serve you or that make you, uh, unhappy and then there you know there's some conflicting beliefs about your tribe right uh, uh, and uh, i find it interesting that okay you're born into a tribe but you can also choose your tribe uh it's not in my opinion it's not necessarily related to blood relationships no, no absolutely not yeah yeah and how does it show up for you for instance when couples come to do psychedelic therapy or uh, microdosing like we see also there is you know this whole relationship thing actually gets strengthened and people also i think they want to uh, have a companion when they do this type of work yeah. so it's very often that their partner comes into comes onto the stage and they start doing this work together what, what well, strikes you about that you're you're right jacobine uh, uh, first of all i find it very it, it, it's very alienating if one person has experience with microdosing or macrodosing and the other one doesn't because the language is different, as you know. There's no vocabulary to describe uh, the depth of the feelings. You have to feel, you have to experience. So if one person is, is engaged with this and the other one isn't, yeah, there's a gap. Uh, uh, and I, I think for a couple's issues, which I see a lot in my practice because I'm I work with couples a lot. Uh, it can be very, uh, it's, you know, 
sometimes it's words that is the destroyer because mm -hmm. everything has already been said. Arguments repeat. They are also in the hamster wheel of mm -hmm. uh, patterns, right? Mm -hmm. But to break through a verb verbal pattern, it's a great way to work with psychedelics because you all of a sudden feelings are enhanced and you move from here to here, which is a wonderful way to work through a conflict instead of, uh, you know, talking from one side of the brain and the uh, partner usually answers from the other side of the brain. Hmm. Um, so psychedelics and relationship issues Okay, I, I should give words with I definitely feel. Janine puts two thumbs up for yeah. people who are just listening. She puts two thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, unfortunately, we're not allowed to work uh, yet with with MDMA. Uh, but, you know, when, 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 when that will be permitted, I think there's going to be an amazing uh, change in uh, the therapeutic landscape. Because we, if you can really talk from the heart, uh, through very difficult issues that cerebrally you get stuck in. It's a wonderful way to work through stuck patterns. But yeah. for microdosing, I also think it, 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 it's, it can be very helpful to be more present, to be more present with your feelings. And also, like, just like you said, to have a companion and, hey, what do you feel? Hey, when you look at that green leaf outside, what, you know, what do you feel? The colors are enhanced or, yeah, mm -hmm. it's... It, yeah. It's a good uh, uh, thing to do together. Yeah, yeah. I, I see people, they just relate to each other in a different way. There is so much more understanding because, of course, they know their partner, but the things that usually bother them when they are microdosing, they see they see those things, those aspects in a different light. They are like, oh, my partner is very intellectual, focused on problem solving. And I know this is a bit of a stereotype, you know, like it's very often a woman talking about her partner, her husband, <laughs> but they, they see it in a different light and they see like, oh, that's their way of relating to me. And that's their way of actually loving me and, and being in this relationship. But now I can appreciate that. And then the other way around as well, right? And then the other thing uh, is uh, uh, sexually, it can also uh, offer uh, different perspectives because everything is enhanced. So, you you know, touch is one of our senses that uh, I, I get reports mm. back that uh, that feels much more intense too. Mm. So... Uh, in my practice, you know, people show up with issues in the bedroom and uh, it's a new, uh, a new angle to, uh, to explore together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's the beauty of this, right? You can uh, explore every um, dimension of your being, whether it's emotional. And of course, we tend to focus maybe more on the emotional and on the psychological because that's where the issues are. But the physical is also, yeah, enhanced. And it's also a new thing then to explore that maybe yeah. they thought they had already figured it out. But yeah, mm -hmm. that's really nice to hear. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so as a sex therapist, I see a lot of opportunities too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, this brings me also to the question, what are you, let's say, dreaming about? So when you see all of these things happening, uh, I feel we're still very much at the beginning, at the in the early stages of you know um, the psychedelic renaissance in therapy. Um, but what are some of the things you're dreaming about, or some of the things that you think, wow, this this is really going to happen. This is going to change everything. Um, so yeah, so what I dream about is MDMA for couples. Mm -hmm. I think that has huge potential. Um, but I also am, uh, I see a lot of potential in cannabis. Uh, it, like like therapeutic use of cannabis, and I I really believe that we are shifting from symptom re reduction to looking deeper and further into ourselves and seeing where we can find our own resources to work through issues in a therapeutic context. So instead of finding external resources to 
fix, so to say, our issues, I believe it's much more powerful if it comes from within. And yes, I realize what I'm saying is it can be a bit controversial because we're using an external uh, aid, but ultimately the goal is to leave behind the uh, you know uh, mind altering substances but it can show you that you have that in internal power and then you you can learn to do this without the substances yeah so ultimately i think it's a deep dive for your own hidden treasure box and once you know once you find it you can open up the treasure box in the therapy sessions and and work with it without the substances Mm, mm. You know, this is actually a great analogy to treasure your own inner treasure box, because, um, you know, we come from a paradigm where you say, oh, I have to go to a really good therapist uh -huh, with a big uh -huh. toolbox, which is what you are. <laughs> And we're moving into a new paradigm where you start to build your own toolbox, yeah. actually. Definitely. Yeah. So th th that's why, uh, you know, sometimes people are afraid of, of that whole concept of a bad trip. And there are, uh, you know, pharmacological interventions to, to, to help someone, right? But I think if you work through a difficult, whatever it is, in a, in a psychedelic space, it, it's so empowering. Um, and obviously, you need to know you're in a safe environment and that, that nothing... Uh, can happen, but it is very empowering to work through something all by yourself because you are having the deepest conversation with you and all the layers of your onion instead of a therapist saying, oh, what would, what, uh, what would this part of you say or what would that part of you say? You can go through it on an experiential level by yourself. That's why my new uh, uh, um, adventure is called Experiential Training Institute. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So, so yeah. So, so tell me more about that because I was under the assumption it was called this way because um, there's a focus on training clinicians and, and people in the mental health space to work with psychedelics. So I thought, ah, they get hands-on experience in the Netherlands where this can be legally provided. Um, but yeah, please tell me the full story. <laughs> well, that's exactly what it is. It, it is training uh, clinicians on an experiential level to work with psilocybin in the Netherlands. So that's one part. And the other part is experiential because we work with clients. So let's say, and consumers that are not clinicians on a very experiential level. So what Hans von Weichem is a psychiatrist and myself uh, really wanted to build was to combine uh, different forms of uh, interventions like therapeutic interventions with uh, psilocybin and then to 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 work with that on a very experiential level because ultimately we can talk 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 but if you don't experience it yourself it's still going to be on a certain level it's not going to you know go through all the layers like uh, like we just described so experiential training institute is actually the first training institute in the Netherlands that has been licensed to hand out permanent education points for the Dutch uh, licensed clinicians, which is fascinating, I think, and very necessary because there is a lot of demand uh, for people reading about it or wanting to go through this. And there's not so many uh, trained uh, clinicians, um, you know, to look after these people. But there, yeah. you guys are coaching, you know, you guys are training coaches too. And that's also, you know, super uh, amazing. Um, and necessary. That's what I like about Microdosing Institute so much. The way you, you know, honestly, the way you, uh, you professionalize it and you are very cautious and careful on, on how you go about it. That's what yeah. we, Experiential Training Institute, are also aiming for. Yeah, it's, it's about being grounded in the experience and really talk from the experience uh, itself um, rather than, yeah, Uh, potential only because there is a lot of potential but there is also a lot of uh, caution to be taken uh, yeah. and there's a lot to know we, we also feel like it's it's about building up those layers of yeah of experience and and just as a psychedelic experience and i would definitely include also uh you know a microdosing uh trajectory or cycle into this um many 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 different things can show up 
and you don't know what's going to show up. It's not a linear experience. It can Absolutely. take you here. It can take you to a deep place, to a trauma, to a wound. It can take you to a overarching societal world level of a pain that there is to experience that others have gone through that you might be going through that you are a product of or uh, like all this like interrelation yeah mm. interrelated things and there's both all the beauty and there's all the pain and then there's all the learnings um and i feel like as an organization as a person as someone who accompanies others or who's a guide or facilitator also has to become yeah mm, what am I call it, uh, experienced with those different layers and those different places. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I honestly believe if you, if you have not experienced a psychedelic journey yourself, you can't really work with, uh, with clients, uh, you know, providing them, uh, this kind of therapy. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so yeah. So what, um, what are you hoping to achieve with uh, the Experiential Training well, Institute? I, I hope uh, ultimately we're going to expand uh, the curriculum, but for now we are offering five-day immersion retreats where people learn uh, to facilitate, but where they also uh, are a journeyer. So, um, so you actually, one of the feedback we got from the American uh, students, the IPI students for which we did a retreat in November was, I finally understand on the deepest level of what we ask our clients to do. Mm. And I thought, ah, oh, yeah, that's very valuable and interesting because if you, if you ask your clients, even in uh, clinical research settings to go through a psychedelic experience, but you don't really know how big uh, this can be for someone, it, it, it doesn't really make sense. Yeah. So what I find is a lot of therapists approach me and say, oh, can so-and-so come to your practice because they went to an ayahuasca ceremony or something and uh, they want to talk about it. And then I think, yeah, um, maybe, well, I don't know if I should say that out loud, but maybe you should go through a, a psychedelic session if you have a couple of clients who've been through this. And if you want to really understand what, they're, what, what they mean is you, you can only do that by doing it yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so actually what you're highlighting here is we're in this uh, interesting situation, right, where a lot of people have experiences with psychedelics or they seek that um but they're also uh they, they're also in therapy or they need to someone to talk to and then that person might not have the same experience that person yeah. might be completely like psychedelic naive and yeah of yeah. course that's a problem and you, yeah. and you know uh when you already have a therapeutic bond with someone it's very difficult to send someone somewhere else where they have to basically start from scratch and building up rapport and all that so it would be i think yeah, it should really be part of the curriculum uh, for the future. Um, yeah. To, yeah. To, to, to train clinicians in this uh, modality too. Yeah. 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 I'm, well, I'm really happy to hear that this is the first uh, accredited institution and that this is now um, also going to pave the way for uh, for more uh, education to, to come out. Because, of course, worldwide, we're still in this legal situation where um, there is no full legality. Um, it, it, it still needs to be. Yeah. You know, it's uh, we need some well, the, the governmental decisions and some possibilities opening up to do this fully legally everywhere. Yeah. So the accreditation is for the permanent education points. So it's not like if people come into the training with us, it's not like they're licensed to do this, but they get at permanent PE points uh, to re-register. It helps towards the schooling. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you said that this is the first officially recognized yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so part. It's a really good start. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so the next step is to, um, yeah, to expand uh, what 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 is already happening. But let's see. This year is going to be focused on uh, immersion retreats, and for 2024, we will see where uh, where the road leads us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm really excited about all of that. Um, is there any last 
to wrap up this conversation. I wish we had more time. You know, I wish we could just dive so much more into all of this. But is there any last message maybe that you've um, that you've come across either uh, in your work or maybe in dialogue with uh, the plants, the entheogens that you would like to amplify in this moment to the well, community? <laughs> right. So there is one sentence that, that keeps revisiting me in all my, my own uh, journeys. And I think it, it's definitely applicable for the, the population I work with is the grass is greener where you water it. Mm. So, so basically going inside is the new going outside. <laughs> yeah those two are really powerful yeah it's it's this uh this concept right of where your attention goes that will yes. grow exactly. that will exactly. grow and, and you if, can you, if you garden it exactly Jacobi. that's exactly what i mean so if you dive into yourself and you look at your garden your inner garden there and you 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 look after the inner garden then it is so much more fulfilling because it comes from within. But if you keep focusing your attention on external things or wanting to have a solution externally, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's less fulfilling. So the psychedelics are a catalyst, not the solution, but uh, a catalyst, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a really, a really interesting one, a really great one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for uh, for diving in with me today in this conversation. Yeah, thank you for your invitation. Uh, yes, and um, we'd be very happy to share um, any links, any resources um, that we talked about today, and also to your uh, to your institute and to your work in the show notes, yeah. so people can find out more um, yeah. and they can connect with you if they want. Um, so yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you again. Thanks a lot, Jacobin, uh, and uh, we'll see each other again. We'll see each other soon. And to our dear listeners, I hope you've enjoyed this talk. Uh, with every podcast, we learn something new. And uh, yeah, I hope this episode has been very educational for you too. Thank you for exploring microdosing with us. To keep learning more about microdosing, please subscribe to Microdosing Table Talks wherever you listen to podcasts. This is a wonderful, zero-cost way to support our initiatives at Microdosing Institute. And if you'd like to help us teach more people about this powerful practice, please consider leaving a review. Your kind words go a long way.